Hello and thanks for watching this video and subscribing to our YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to talk about Acumatica's dashboards and how they can really help you display information to your employees so they can do their job more effectively. So here we can see an example of a dashboard. This is the sales manager dashboard. This is part of our sales demo. And we have a number of different dashboards here. And these dashboards are essentially screens in Acumatica. So if we go over to our user profile and we look at it, Acumatica gives you the ability to define per user what screen they should land on. So of course, these are dashboards here. So it could be sales manager, sales operation. If I do a quick filter, you know, any of these dashboards are here. Again, this is part of my sales demo database. You can create any dashboards you want. But you can do that, but you can also pick any home screen that you want. It could be AP Bill, for example, if that's what you do. And you want to go to that screen every time you log into Acumatica. But you can also get to your home page just by clicking the logo up here. So getting back to dashboards, you can see we have different scorecards. We have a pivot table here. We have a chart, a list of information, a grid of information. And taking a look at the design button, if we have the rights, we can edit our dashboards, make changes to them to show different information or information in a different way. And we can click on properties to go in and make some changes. So this is the properties of our sales manager dashboard. It's visible to all these different roles down here. So you can change that. We allow our users to personalize this dashboard, meaning they can hit the design button and take the base dashboard you may have designed and make changes to it accordingly. So let's create a new dashboard and we'll configure it with some widgets and go through the process. So I'll hit the plus button here. We'll call this invoices. We can give it a role. So that is the admin role, for example. We're going to allow users to personalize it. We want to make it visible in the user interface. So this is the sitemap title. Maybe it's called invoices or invoice sales data. We can put it anywhere in our menus. So the workspaces are here along the left. So we'll put it into our dashboard workspace. And the category may just be dashboards, for example, but it could be something else. It could be inquiries. And we'll save it. Now, again, this dashboard, these are the different roles that are assigned that can get access to it. We can also expose this dashboard so any of the roles down below, if they use the mobile app, can see it just like that. And then we can add parameters. But before we do any of that, let's take a look at our new dashboard. It's pretty blank, right? It's just a blank canvas. We haven't done anything. We haven't created any widgets yet. But if we click the design button, we're asked to either move widgets around. We have none but we can create a new widget by clicking this button. So let's get started with a chart. You can see all the different types of widgets we can add, but we'll start off with a chart. We'll select our screen. So everything in Acumatica comes from a data screen. So specifically, if you've seen our other videos on generic inquiries, they're inquiry screens, you could pull any data from Acumatica. If it's in the database, you can get to it. So for example, if we go to generic inquiries, we won't go into a lot of detail here because we have it in other videos. But if we take a look at invoices, and you can see here, this is our generic inquiry. And this also, the way we get to this is it happens to be a landing page or a start page for receivables, invoices, and memos. It's the same thing. And this is all the data there. So any data you want to see is through the generic inquiry. Again, take a look at our videos. These are the tables. These are all the columns of information that we're showing. These columns are going to be critical for us to build out our dashboards. All the information we need is right here. So if we take a look at this a little bit better, again, this is a list of invoices. It's got an amount column. It's got our customers. It's got some dates, it's got status there. And now if we go back to our dashboard, We'll look up our inquiry screen and we'll select it. Over here, we can pick a filter to apply. 
So if we take a look at our different filters, there's only one here, well, other than all records, invoices in the last 60 days. Now, if we go back to our list of invoices and memos, you'll see there are other filters here. Due date, this happens to be a pivot table, but invoices in last 60 days. So if we click on the filter bucket and we take a look at invoices in last 60 days, you can see it here. This is date greater than today minus 60 days. So this is very helpful because it's a viewpoint into the last 60 days and it's dynamic. But you'll notice this has a shared checkbox. If we go to over to due date, why isn't that showing up, Greg, in our dashboard when we're building out the widget? It's because it's not shared. So you need to make sure your filters are shared. If we go back here and we'll leave it at all records. We don't care about that right now. You could override your filter settings just by clicking this button, you can override. And then refresh data. How often do we want the data to refresh? Right now, 30 minutes is great for what we need. We'll create a column chart. Our legend will be the date descending. But we don't want to show every single date for every invoice. That's not really going to help us. So we'll pick months to round. And our format will be month, month, year, 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 the Y, Y, Y. But this format here is perfect. And then our value, we don't need a series here, but our value will be the amount and we're going to sum it. We'll give it a format of comma delimited and we'll click OK, give it a caption and click finish. Now what you can see here is the last 10 periods. If you recall, we selected the last 10, the top 10 in descending order of months. And you could see the different invoice amounts. If we go back here and we scroll down, you can see most of the big value invoices are going back to June and whatnot. And that's what you're seeing here. So that's a chart. Let's create another widget. In this case, we'll create a data table. So we'll say next. We'll pick the same generic inquiry. Of course, we can pick any inquiry we want, but in this case, to make an example of the different types of widgets and different ways of displaying the data, we want to keep it all from the same data source so you can see the difference. So we'll pick inquiry screen invoice and memos again. We'll leave it at all records. Our refresh data is on page reload. That means every time we go to this dashboard, we'll always see the latest dashboard. Over here, we can choose what columns we want. So for example, maybe I don't need uh, my original reference number or retainage document. Not interested in the currency or again, the unreleased retainage, original retainage, a customer PO number or the post period. And this looks like it's an additional field about the amount. And if I click OK here, those will be the columns I need. And this will be list of invoices and we'll click finish. So this is helpful. This will give me a list of invoices. Maybe I need to see that. Again, this is all of my invoices. I could filter by maybe today's invoices, for example, just create a filter. You can make this a different size if you need to. So now we'll create a scorecard. You can see the embedded web page and header. Those are other options there. Embedded web page would just be a web page. You can pick the URL. But for now, let's create a scorecard Click the next button. We'll select our data set of invoices and memos. We can use a shared filter here. So maybe we want to see invoices in the last 60 days. Again, we can override this filter. If we don't like the shared filter, or we want to make some changes to it. The field to aggregate will be the amount. We're not going to count it. We're going to sum it. And maybe our normal level will be $5,000, but our alarm level will be $2,000. Very low numbers, but the normal color is the color that Acumatica will show if we're over this $5,000. The alarm color will show if we're under $2,000, and of course the yellow will be anything in between. We'll pick an icon here for the account balance, just a dollar sign, and then we'll show invoices last 60 days. We'll click finish here. And now you can see a green icon here for the $5,000. Because we are greater than 5,000, it's green. 
I go back to my invoices and memos, and maybe I pick on this balanced one. Balanced invoice in Acumatica means it can still be changed or deleted. And so if I delete it, and I go back to our dashboard, I can either refresh or just click the little refresh button here. Notice it's dropped us into yellow because now we are in that two to $5,000 threshold. So maybe now we want to add a new widget. And this time we'll do a trending card. And maybe I want to pick invoices and memos here. But maybe I want to aggregate the amount field. I'm going to sum it, of course. And my timeline will be based on the date field of that generic inquiry. The period will be last year. So I'm going to analyze last year's sales or invoices versus this year's. I could put a caption here, but I'll click finish. And now you get an idea of last year's versus this year's. So last year being 18.66 million more than this year, our trend is down 35%. So that's another way to display information from the same data source, the inquiry data source. Now let's go into design and let's add a parameter. A parameter allows you or your end user to be able to make selections and then quickly display that information based on those selections on your dashboard. So if we go to parameters, maybe we want to choose the customer's name. So we'll select customer here as the name of the condition. We'll choose our B account. And the field we're going to choose is our account code. And here we could choose a default value, but if we select from schema, that gives us the ability to do a lookup. So we'll leave that alone now. We want to keep it blank and we'll hit the save button. Now, again, if we view our dashboard, you could see at the top of the screen, we have a customer lookup. And when we do a lookup, we can select any one of our customers. Now, this currently doesn't do anything, right? Because we didn't connect any of our widgets to this parameter. However, if we go back and maybe we want our list of invoices to be filtered and possibly our other widgets here to be filtered by customer, we can click on design, like the pencil field, go to filter settings. Our filters need to be defined here in order to pick up this parameter and use it because your generic inquiry doesn't know about this parameter. So if we go here to filter settings, we can select our customer is equal to, and we'll check this little use parameter field. And now we can see all our parameters here. There's only one and click OK. We click finish here. Turn off the design. Nothing's really changed here, but as soon as I select a specific customer, you can now see you're filtering by the customer. And of course, you can do this through the scorecard or the trending card or your chart. So this could be very helpful. You can add as many parameters as you want. And they also show up on the mobile app if this was exposed to the mobile app. So that's dashboards. The ability to convey information for your employees so they can make decisions and do the job they need to. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing to our channel. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much and have a great day.